Hello and welcome to another one of my videos. In this one I'm going to be uh, looking a bit at a few tips for being a little bit more efficient in making uh, ukuleles and guitars. Now the first tip is a tool for your mould here. When you've got your sides in your mould you, before you put your linings and your top and bottoms on, uh, you just take a stick that's going to go in there and with a hole here and a, 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 a bolt that will screw in and out so that it is now adjustable so you can fine tune how far you want that or how tight you want it to go into your mould. It's too much. There we are. Just to hold those sides out while you put those linings in top or bottom on. Uh, the part here often in that curve sometimes doesn't push nicely against your mould so sometimes it's better to push it on the inside rather than clamp it from the outside. So a diagonal stick here just to push in there works fine. Just a stick with a, an adjustable bolt once again. And the other one I've made in this shape so that the bolt can go halfway so that they're pressurising at the same more or less level and that can go in to hold those two diagonals out. Works quite well temporarily while you put your linings and maybe your top on and then you can remove them. Bending the sides are always the most difficult for me and so uh, this is what I've basically come, come up with as my best solution so far. Now my eldest son was uh, throwing this, uh, this little stove out it's an electric one and it heats quite well so I tend to use that nowadays. Now I get a rag and I wet, wet it and wring it out and then I roll up the side in that damp cloth. So now it's uh, nice and damp and this way I can now put that on the hot pot and get on the stove and heat it and if it dries out just trickle a bit more water on there and you can feel whether it is bending or not. Now the older timbers it seems to me takes a lot more steaming see there it's starting to to relax be careful you don't burn yourself and I'm just heating one spot at the moment the part that's going to go around the waist and there it is starting to bend reasonably nicely and then on the mold here with it still in its uh, thing there I can now see if it's going to relax into that corner there might need a little bit more and when that goes in there without snapping, I can get a stick with a stretchy cloth string on and that will pull it in. And then with these things here, I can clamp it down. Into its position. And then with the mould there, I'm going to put on there and let it heat up. And then as it starts to give and starts to flex, I can then slowly have that bend around. And that is the tightest curve really on the ukulele. Take it carefully so it doesn't snap, but you get the feel of it after a while. And the same, clamp it off. And now you can do the other side, the same. We can let that cool a little bit. And then we can take the, the rag off.
And then put it back on to then dry. Preferably leave that, say, for a day or overnight, uh, just so it dries and, stay, and takes the form of the, or takes its shape. The next tip is to do with the linings. The linings you're gonna put in like there and clamp them as well. And I found that this curve around here would often, when you're bending them that way, they would snap uh, and poke out unevenly. And I found it, if you take this segment here and break it off and turn it round, it would go around the curve a lot better because it pulling on this side and gluing on the other. So you get a better, nicer curve there just for that short segment. And then return to putting the last piece in there. Now where the curve is very tight, like on a ukulele, it sometimes breaks in there, or the gaps that are in here aren't quite enough to give you the, enough curvature and you get these sort of gaps here. So we need to fix that. When I'm cutting my linings, I've cut my stick uh, approximately eight millimeters uh, generically, and I put my stick in here and the lining itself to give me a space of eight millimeters till I get to my stop, which is that nail, so that when I cut that first cut, it's going to be basically a square. Now to get it to do a tighter corner, I need a cut halfway between that. So I measure in a little bit, like half distance there, and put a little hole with an, another stop, so that now, I go out, make my cut, and now it is half that distance, so I'm making tighter cuts. Now if that is a bit stiff, I can take off a bit of material off this side, either with a plane, or a little spoke shape is really cool, that works well. Before failing that, we could use some rough sandpaper and sand some of that back so that it will bend a lot easier. So that gives us a much tighter curve and it'll go around that corner a lot easier and in here also it will go a lot better as well. And there we have them gluing up. The next tip is with the ribs. Now that I've um, uh, plane them down a little bit. To get the, uh, the scalloping, rather than using a chisel on the bench like I was before, just use a knife, measure roughly where you want to go, and then just, that's about the quickest way of getting a good scallop. And then with some rough sandpaper on a broomstick, you can just sand that tidy. Now those closer cuts mean that you've got a little bit more precision also when you are going to put your ribs in using a very cheap budget um, chisel. I can just cut out a couple of those to make the recess to put that rib into on both sides. Now that I have my ribs in, I can remove those struts, all those supports there, by undoing the bolt, and removing them. When doing the sound hole, I find it's good to just measure with some calipers between the two ribs, just to make sure that we're not gonna to get too close to any of the ribs and make a little hole. And then on the other side, double check that you're on the center line there before you start your hole with the hole cut. If I cut from both sides, uh, making a score, I can get a, a, bit, a bit of a cleaner hole 
and it's not quite so difficult to get through the two millimeters if you've got some hard timber in there so score from this side as well as from the other side so that came out reasonably tidy and it's a good idea just to protect those borders so nothing's going to chip out any of those little composite ones particularly when you're doing composites is make a circle like that uh, with a two millimeter one so that it fits over that hole and then it's easier to cut the hole first in a, a bigger sheet and then trim the edges off so there it is glued in and it gives some protection to those nice thin pieces so they won't chip or fall or get knocked out. When doing a composite back or front you're going to just like you're giving reinforcement to the hole so that it, those little pieces won't fracture off you find other places like here or these little uh, joints are potential fractures if the ukulele is going to get a hit so we can give some reinforcement to that by using some very thick, uh, as thick as you can, wood shavings, straighten it with a little bit of glue to make it stiffer, and then you can think right, get right down the centre, we'll cut a piece and glue some patches covering those joints, just to give them that little extra bit of strength. Now the back is a little bit different because we don't have access from the back. So I've made a composite uh, back here that needs reinforcing. And I can take the ukulele out of the mould because the ribs are going to hold that firm uh, for the moment. And I'm going to lay that on the flat, putting the ukulele on top of that board. I can then draw around, find my pencil, here it is draw around here also through the hole I can mark the two ribs where they come and then with some calipers I can measure those ribs the distance of those there to then mark them out on the board also the distance of the third rib mark that out and its width as well and then the linings in from that edge I can then get that and then mark that on the board as well so that you know where they're going to go and that's going to be ready to then so you know exactly where you're going to put your ribs or your reinforcements onto those joints. Now a reason for gluing little sticks rather than uh, the wood shavings is they don't curl as they are gluing on you can get a lot more done and then with a spokes shave you can then or and or sandpaper you can then make them less and then with sandpaper and where it becomes doubtful that it might go under something you can sand it and feather it out to almost nothing so that it doesn't become a problem you can feather it right out now concerning the fretboard, I've changed my strategy. Before I used to put the frets in and then glue the whole thing on. But in gluing it, I found that sometimes it twisted and bent and warped. So now I make sure that with a nice straight ruler that I get the body straight for a start to minimize effect. And then I glue the fretboard on so that after the gluing with the shrinkage of the glue and everything if there's going to be any twisting it will do it and then I can level it up again with the hand plane before putting the frets on I found that was a little bit more accurate and quicker and last of all when you're setting up the string to get the heights there or check your heights is a useful tool here that you can make is just a wedge now I went to a, uh, a neighbouring uh, workshop who had a digital uh, readout and they could tell me where uh, four and two millimetres were so I could then judge where three and one and five is. And that is a very useful to, tool for measuring the height precisely of the strings. So on the first thread here, you can just slide that tip of there and I found that most of the musicians that, I had, that have tested the ones I've fixed they prefer it to be only one millimetre off 
there so it slides in under the string in there so on the 12th fret or on there I slide it in there until it just touches the string and this one is just a, about a millimetre high according to the last musician that tried it but he said it was quite adequate at that between 3 and 4 at the 12th fret uh, they seem to like so that's a good way to measure with a wedge so there are a few tips uh, for the moment uh, and I want to stress that I'm not a luthier, I'm just learning as I go so if you're the same as me and you're not a luthier and you want to learn as you go here are a few tips that I have sort of figured out um, and if you want to make your own ukulele or guitar this might help and uh, if you have an old guitar or something that you want to fix and it's too expensive to take it to a luthier because it's budget you can at least have a go.